everybody, we are ready to continue on my uh, Windows Form object-oriented program, a role-playing game. Okay, and it's time to do a little refactoring as we look at this project. Um, now that we've created a way to load a, or to save a character's data in an XML file, um, we're going to clean to this main menu up a little bit. Now we're going to create it so that we can actually load the detail of the character uh, off of the XML file. First thing we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the options button. I don't really need to see that. And I'm going to get rid of the stats button for now. And I still haven't gone over either of these three buttons. However, I want to change the behavior here. When we create our character and we click on it, the idea is really to launch, it, launch the game itself. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change the text on here and we'll call it create a new game. And then uh, when you go to create it, it will still take you to the character creator that we did before. But we're going to see if once we create it, if we can open up a new window and then pull in all of our information off of that XML file and load it on a new form just to say and prove and to show how we can grab information and basically what's called deserialize. In other words, take... Uh, information off of an XML file and pull it in and create our character based on that. So let's see if we can do that now. So of course the first thing we want to do is change the text that is on here. Instead of create character, text is down here. We're going to create a new game. Now if you create a new game, you're going to want to have a new character. So this is still going to go to the character creator. So if I double click on this that says new game, it takes me right here. So now we create a new game. And so what we're going to want to do now is um, this is the form creator. And all it really is showing us right now that is that we're on our page. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our code. It'll be just a moment. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong file. It's been a while. OK, so we're going to go to the form character creator. Um, that will be, uh, let's just show you what it looks like, form character creator looks like this remember this so this should be the window it opens we've got our information on here and we have the save your character button and at the end of the save your button what it told us to do is to close this file and i believe we're done so what we want to do now is that instead of closing it when we click save this character we want to open up a new folder now already we have everything to store it so we're going to close this, but only after we open a new file. So let's go ahead and design a form that will display our character information. We just want to do this to prove that we can now load that information. Now this particular page is going to be kind of like a stats for our player, so that at any point if we want to check stats, it should open this up. Um, and then, uh, so let's go ahead and create that now. Okay, so let's click on the RPG, our solution, right click, and we're going to add a Windows form. And this will be for the character stats. We'll call it character ID. So we go over here, character ID.cs, we add it. Now, to help make this a little bit easier to see, let me adjust some of these tools here. I'm going to hide the solution property for now. And then I'm going to drag the toolbox and make it visible. Oops. OK. And we'll drag that over. OK. So I don't need to see all the extra code here. Character ID, we need to make sure it's named as such on here. Great, we got it. We're going to add some labels. First label is going to be for the uh, name of our character. And we name it, and we should set the font. If I can find it. Set 12 point font, set bold from false to true. Now it's bold, and we add the text, which now states name go here. And see where it says character ID. Let's change the text to say character stats. Like so. We've got the name. Let's 
click our other labels. And on this one, this is for the gender. And we're not going to mess with the font. And let's go ahead and add our label for the class. Okay, character class. Okay. And then we're going to add one button at the end. We're going to drag it towards the bottom. And on this, it's going to be our done button. We'll call it BTN close. And when you click on it, of course, it will close the window. But for our text, we're going to just write done. Okay. So when they're done, they click done. All right. Let's say we want to program this. The first thing we want to do is double click on that. And, and I'm going to zoom in on here. You're going to see that private void. Let me hide the properties for now. And so now you can see the code. I'm going to go ahead and hide the toolbox. And we really want to focus on the code here. Uh, before we do that, though, we need to uh, create now the code from our character creator. Um, so we're going to go over here. We're going to double click on here. And it's uh, by the way, all of this code is for clicking the Save Character button. So what we want to do here is, at, right after we store the character, and before we close the window, we want to create our new one, which is Character ID, our new window. And we'll call it Stats equals New Character ID. So this constructs it, and we have to show it, Stats.show. And then we have a This.close. So let's save all our changes and see if that works. Here we go. Notice our buttons now are working. We click on New Game. O opens up our character. Fred is a rogue. We save Fred. We get our stats here. And now it didn't close. Oh, there we go. It closed the window, open the new one. We click on done. This does not close the window, so we're going to want to make sure that we do that. Okay. Plus, I've left room for an avatar here, and then we want to display our stats, and we can add that a little bit later. Okay, so we're done testing that out. That seems to work. Now what we want to do is we need a way of loading up our character from the XML file. And so let's see if we have the XML file character settings. Um, depends on the file here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and open it up just to make sure it's working. And then we'll talk about uh, loading an existing file onto our page. And there we have it. Ah, this is a different file I was looking at. I was in another folder. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Here's the actual one. Yep, Fred, female rogue with no real stats to speak of. Okay, great. I shouldn't have closed that window, but I did. Right, the next thing we want to do is, remember I did that store character and um, how we stored the character? I want to make it so we can do all of that in a separate file. Let me zoom out a little bit here. One of the things you'll notice is we have these methods for setting, or actually this is, a, uh, yeah, for settings folder, settings file, default settings, Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of that code. What I'd like to do is put this in its own class in our Solution Explorer. So I'm going to click on here, Solution Explorer. I'm going to go to Classes, and I'm going to add a new class. So that will be Add Class. And we're going to call this File Manager. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to manage our files. And uh, so this would be a great resource that we can add. Now I'm going to zoom in on this. First thing, we need our using statements. And so we need input and output. That's IO. We also need to do XML. And we need XML. And we want to do serialization. Okay, so these are the three main things that we're going to do to allow us to manage our files. 
and we're going to put it inside of the class and I just pasted it in. So we have our settings folder, we have our settings file, we have default settings, I'm going to change that to say default player. I'm going to close that um, and it's default player settings but you'll see in just a moment why we want to call it default player. And we're going to add another uh, method and this one is going to be public. This is what is going to allow us to load a file. So we make it public. It is static because it has to, the reason why it's static is that it's part of the file manager class as a whole and it doesn't refer to specific objects. It allows us to actually modify other. And we're going to do it load. Uh, sorry. Oh, we need to say uh, it's going to, oh yeah, yeah, load player. Sorry, it keeps doing that. One more time, load player. Loader. Load player. This one, we know we want to load a player. We don't have to give it any information. We just need to make sure we return a player object. Don't ask me why I'm doing this. Okay, so on load player, we are going to check to make sure there is a file, and if there isn't, we're going to send it default settings. So if file dot exists, and this is if the file does not exist, that's why we put the little exclamation mark. And then um, we're going to do uh, settings, file because it's a file and if it doesn't exist we're going to return and then it's going to be default player default player actually I need to do it as a method right default player and then that will send out um, a default player oh no I just do it like that okay now we need to make sure at this point uh, that we also um, go ahead and if it does exist, we're going to do the rest. So we're going to use a using statement. We use a stream. Now, a stream is for input output, so it's actually a, a stream of information that's streaming from one file to the project. Um, and we're going to do file dot, and it's file dot open read. So we're going to open it and be able to read it, and we need to give it the path. And so it's going to be the settings file. Okay? And we do two of these. And it's using, and so this is a type of function, so to speak. And while using that, we need to create a serializer. So that's XML serializer. And I see it down there. XML serializer, ser, shorthand, equals new XML serializer. Okay, now we need to give it what type it is. So it's type of, and then it's going to be a player. So it, we've gone over this before, but the type of basically a serializer needs to know what data type it is, and it's a player. So that's what we're going to do there. And then we're going to put a return, and we need to cast it as a player. So we put player in parentheses, player ser.deserialize and we're deserializing the stream that we get for the input output. And we're having some issues here. Must have a return type. I forgot to put that in there. Player. Okay. We load the player. Now our return statements are good. Everything's ready. I think we're ready to test it. However, we're running low on time. So on the next part of our video, we're going to go ahead and try to test this and get this code to work. So stay tuned while we work on that.